Yeah, I want to go over the um, ozone generators. And this is something you can use for purifying water, taking out all the pathogens or even toxins. What happens is ozone is O3. It's like um, it's a molecule with an extra atom. So oxygen is O2 and this is ozone O3. And it does, this one's a cheap one and I have another one that's more money. I'll show you what that is. Um, but this one I got off of Amazon, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going to show you what this is. Um, I paid about 60 bucks for it, probably it's about $70. Had this a few years, it's been holding up very good. Used to use it a real lot. Um, first, though, like what I do though, turn it on, you see it beeped, and I use like a large, tall glass of ice water. This is really ice cold water with ice in it because the ozone gets held in the water if it's ice. If the colder the water, the better the ozone stays in the water. So um, to do is this one, I usually do it like it's overkill and I haven't really had any problems with it. You see I put it on setting 5. That means it's going to go for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. The unit will kick over and you can see it's kicking over, right? So it's bubbling up, it's forcing ozone. Now this is not like a super, super high um, concentrated ozone because ozone generators like the really good ones will use an oxygen tank and it'll feed pure oxygen into the ozone generator and it'll make a much more powerful ozone. This is just making it from the ambient air. But still, like, you know, normally you would treat the water just for a few minutes, but I treat it for 20 minutes. And um, when it, it does this, um, ozone will combine with toxins and neutralize it. I mean, not just pathogens, not just bacteria neutralize and kill bacteria, fungi, and viruses, but it'll actually neutralize toxins. You know, one of the things they were concerned about in Florida a few years ago was the Corexit, which was in the rainwater, which was getting in the tap water from the Gulf spill. They were using to, like, um, uh, you know, get rid of the oil that was in the Gulf. Or sometimes if you're concerned with water contamination that's in the, um, you know, the aquifer that's underground where all the well water comes from. Well, if you do this with the water, it'll take out the toxins. It'll actually neutralize them because O3, when it combines with, it's a very unstable molecule, it doesn't last that long, but it will it'll combine with pretty much any toxin and not neutralize it. That's the advantage of using ozone over, say, uh, calcium hypochlorate or something like that to purify water. Because in one case, you know, with the chemical treatment, like calcium dioxide or something, I mean, uh, chlorine dioxide or calcium hypochlorite, like something like this, if you're using a water treatment like this, this is taking care of the pathogens but the ozone treatment is taking care of the toxins. That's a major consideration. So, you know, I always thought it was much better. Now, in a case like, say, for instance, you're going to detox the body. Um, for using this ozone, it works pretty damn good because a lot of times, you know, when you're getting rid of, you know, internally, say, for instance, uh, you're knocking out a lot of pathogens in your body or something by various treatments you're doing. When you use ozone, it'll neutralize the dead debris from those um, bad pathogens that get knocked out. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but basically when you're knocking out pathogens or purging the body of toxins, you want to you want to use ozone because it'll neutralize any of the bad chemicals or anything from um, you know, knocking out the bad pathogens and stuff like that because when you knock out bad pathogens they die and it's just like you know a little critter died that's that's when it becomes the most toxic and this ozone will totally neutralize the those those toxins that's the advantage of it and like I was stating if you're using a chemical to treat the water right what happens is um, you're not actually knocking out the toxins. What you're doing is you're knocking out just the pathogens. And that's a big consideration. So you want to knock out everything at once. All right, so now these uh, ozone generators count down the last minute. 
and uh, you know it's still bubbling up in the water pushing ozone now this is not a very strong ozone like I said it's being made from ambient air it's not coming from um, being made from pure oxygen if you start it with pure oxygen it would be a hell of a lot stronger so it's just coming from ambient air and then you see the thing just bump you know stops and it resets itself now you know I just drank some of it now I that's actually treated a hell of a lot more than most of them you know they recommend they say do it for, for a few minutes I've always done it for 20 minutes and actually I've used this thing for a couple years uh, I was running it 20 minutes on 30 minutes off you don't want to try to run it 20 minutes on and 20 minutes on and the 20, right after right back to back you'll burn it out but it's still good as long as it gets down at that 30 minute cool down period with this thing you get a 30 minute cool down period uh, in between like treatments you know between using it even if you can run it up to 20 minutes these little ones will burn out if you try to run them constantly and it's setting on here none of them are set for just running constantly it's set for like one minute two minutes uh, five minutes ten minutes and twenty minutes and you know you can also do it in cycles so I had it on going in cycles twenty minutes on thirty minutes off I, I believe, or 20 minutes on, 40 minutes off, excuse me. It's it's a preset cycle. And I was running it like that for a couple of years, and the thing's still working, so it's pretty good. Now, this is a different ozone maker I have that it's, um, it's actually stronger, but it's actually in two parts. It's designed to work with an O2 oxygen tank, like you'd feed in oxygen here. Now, I just use ambient air from a, um, it's actually a fish tank pump. That's all it is, it's 10 bucks. So I'm not using pure oxygen, I'm using ambient air. But you can also treat the water the same way, put the stone in here. But this one, since you're using a stronger pump uh, to pump the air through it, you can make uh, ozonated oil. And there's another thing with that. Um, now with this, I want to point out, these hoses after a while break down. See, ho ozone, you have to use specific hoses that are designed to withstand making ozone. because plastics and rubbers will break down ozone will break down rubbers and plastics and you totally destroy these hoses and even these hoses that are designed to uh, hold up against the ozone for a while they'll break down even though they're designed to hold up against them so you gotta replace them every once in a while but when you replace them get the right ones because if you just get a plastic hose it'll fall apart in no time plus the, it'll contaminate whatever you're you're trying to uh, purify because you know it'll uh, the plastics will be breaking down. These are designed for ozone. So same way you can put this in here. Now I'm just using like a fish tank pump which is pretty cool because I don't want to buy oxygen tanks. So here you turn it on and it has like a little volume thing. I got this off of uh, eBay. You can slow it down. That's a quartz that's making ozone right now. Then I plug in this, the um, what do you call it, the fish tank pump. And you can see there it is, it's bubbling up water, right? It's, it's pumping water, uh, air through the system. So this generates um, ozone, and it's coming out ozone this side. And this makes a better quality ozone, actually, than the other one. Um, now, what you can do is use this wine carafe, put like a couple ounces of oil on the bottom here. Um, olive oil, right? Now, if you're using an oxygen tank to feed this here instead of this air pump from the fish tank which is just pumping ambient air. If you're using pure oxygen you can make ozonated oil in a matter of some several days running this 24 hours a day. This doing it with ambient air might take you about 10 days or so. You'll make a thick, you'll see the oil get thicker. If you try to do that with the other unit that's cheaper you'll burn out the pump that's in it so that's strictly for making water, the water stuff. That's all it's doing. This one you can make the ozonated oil and I'm going to show you what it looks like. i got a little bit of it left. I made this stuff before. Yeah, and I just put this in the uh, water tank thing for now because I'm not making any oil. But you would bubble up. This is actually a combination of olive and coconut oil. And this is in a glass container. I don't put it in. You don't put um, ozonated oil in a plastic container because it'll break down the plastic. It's got to be glass. And then you put it in a refrigerator. Now, if you open this up and you, and you, and you when you use it, you op you open it up, you put it back in the refrigerator after you use it, and you can use it for applications on the skin. Now, since this also um, 
is very healthy for the skin in a lot of ways because of the good oils, coconut and olive. You're also uh, putting ozone into the skin, which removes and neutralizes pathogens and also um, chemicals. And, you know, in my mind, I'm going to say this. To me, I don't see why this hell, this wouldn't work good against, let me just put it as an experimental cure, cancer, skin cancer. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? What, is, what does cancer hate? Cancer hates ox, oxygen. So what you're doing is you're putting O3 in there, which will break down into oxygen, and the O1 molecule will neutralize toxins. Plus, you're using two good oils on it that are very healthy for the skin. So, um, you know, if I was mess, if I had skin cancer, let me put it this way: if I was going to experiment with something, I would try this. I don't see how it would hurt. But you know, when you're making this stuff yourself, it's cheap. What the hell does it cost you for some coconut oil and some olive oil? And you put it in here, and you make this. It takes you a while to make it, but it, the cost is minimal. It's really nothing. So uh, I think it's a great idea, but you have to use a wine carafe because if you put a couple ounces in here, this stuff will all bubble up. And the reason I use a wine carafe is because you see how the sides are curved like this? It'll come bubbling up on the side and it'll try to make it up the side and it'll go right back down. If you use a straight carafe, it goes up and over the top. You don't want that to happen. That's why I use a wine carafe to make this. I just want to point that out again. hope I didn't forget anything. If you got any questions, just comment below.